time if at all possible here. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our latest parent information session. Today, I hope to provide you with some clear expectations for the upcoming year. Uh, we've developed what we believe to be a really thorough and complete plan. Uh, my team and I have not stopped working, have not stopped planning since March. Uh, we're consistently tweaking the plan and moving as we go through, trying to make sure that all of our bases are covered. And every day as we work through it, there seem to always be some additional curveballs that are thrown in our direction. But we are doing our best to try to navigate that as we move through. Uh, as much as we plan, I really am not naive to the fact that Curveballs continue to be thrown our way, and we need to be able to adapt on the fly as these curveballs are coming. So, our plans will be constantly tweaked and adjusted as needed. Um, for the first few weeks, I'm really going to need your patience and your trust. Uh, please know that everything we do is in the best interest of your kids, in the best interest of our kids. Uh, we want them back, we really we need them back. And based on the survey data that we have, we can tell that you want them back as well. Uh, just give me one second. I'm going to admit a few more people from the waiting room. Very good. Um, at the moment, just to give you a little bit of data, we are a little bit shy of about 90% of our students and our families selected the blended, the blended learning model and a little over 10% have selected the fully remote model. Uh, those numbers far exceed citywide averages. Um, I'm glad to see that. That means that you are happy with the things that are happening at IS34 and that you want your children to be a part of our school and we want them here. Um, as you know, and as I've said before, and we've communicated all summer long, our school has chosen option two of the chancellor's potential school opening models. All this simply means is that our students have been divided into four different cohorts. Uh, cohorts A, B, and C will be coming to school in a blended learning model, and cohort D will be fully remote. Initial, initially, there was a lot of uncertainty around who would teach the fully remote kids. And we were unsure for quite some time and through some collaboration with our staff, through some creativity, we are very happy to say that our fully remote students will be taught by our teachers based on the current situation as we know it to be right now. So we are very happy with the way things are with that and our students, be it in person, or remote will be taught by our teachers and really will be taught by their regular teacher, which is something that is amazing at the moment. Um, the schedule for September and October, as far as the different cohorts has been posted on our school website. It's there for you to see. We will update November through June shortly. Honestly, we just haven't gotten to putting it up on the site yet, just because there are so many moving parts to getting us open. But the schedule for from September through June is done, and we will share it with you uh, as soon as we can. Um, I know that parents have a lot of questions. What I'm going to ask is that if you have questions, please just put them into the chat. Today, for today's purposes, I'm not going to answer individual questions, but if you put them in the chat, what I will do as soon as the meeting is over is I will download all of the questions and my team and I will sit down and we will answer all of them in writing and we'll post them on our website and on our social media pages, just like we have done all along through our other info, info sessions. Um, if you have a personal question that doesn't speak to an overall school policy, but is unique to your son or daughter, I ask that you just email your child's grade specific assistant principal 
and they will answer that question for you right away. That's not something we need to put into our school-wide FAQs in most situations. Um, of course, you can email me as well, but a lot of times the APs have a great handle on what's happening directly inside of their grade, and they are the perfect go-to person. Um, additionally, I understand that Zoom will, is going to limit how many participants we can have on this call. Right now, we have a little over 320. Um, if we hit 500, some people may get logged out of the call. So what I will do right after this is we're, we are recording this meeting. Once we are done recording, we will download that and we will share it to our website as well. And we will also post uh, it on our different social media pages so that everyone, whether or not they were in the meeting or not, has an opportunity to view the video at their leisure later on. I'm sure the work day gets in the way sometimes. Um, so now I wanna get down to business after we've outlined our introduction. Uh, the purpose for today, like I said, was to give you some information about clear expectations for the school year, um, as well as to address any concerns or questions that you may have. And then I wanna just be as clear and transparent with you as possible so that you know what's about to happen at IS34 come the first day of virtual learning tomorrow on the 16th or the first day of really in-person learning and the kickoff of the actual school year on Monday. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna readmit the waiting room for one second. There we go. And perfect. So just so we all know and we're all clear, the start of our school day begins every day, Monday to Friday at 8.30 a.m. And our day ends every day, Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. All right, this is the case, whether or not you are an in-person student or you are a remote student. So if your cohort is in school, your day is 8.30 to 2, to 2 p.m. If you are in a cohort that's home or you're a fully remote kid, your day is 8.30 to 2. You need to be up in the morning and logged on. Um, let's just go through that again. Last year, there was some flexibility that was in place regarding when kids were able to log on to the computer. This year, we're starting the year in blended learning. This is not something that is new to us. So we are starting with clear expectations and it is the expectation that your children are available and engaged from 8.30 to 2 p.m., whether they are in school or whether they are home. Daily attendance will be taken school-wide for in-person students and for remote students at 8.30 a.m. every day. Again, daily attendance will be taken each day for fully remote students or in-person students every day at 8.30 a.m. Uh, in-person students are expected to be in class on time at 8.30 each day, and our students that are working remotely need to be awake and logged into their Google Classroom by 8.30 each day. All students are expected to join their grade-specific Google Classrooms for attendance. There is a sixth grade attendance page, there is a seventh grade attendance page, and there is an eighth grade attendance page in Google Classroom. So if you're a sixth grader, we've been pushing this for two weeks now, you need to make sure that you have logged on and joined your sixth grade Google attendance page. If you're a seventh grader, the same, and if you're an eighth grader, the same, you must join your grade specific Google Classroom attendance page. And each day you start your day by logging onto that page and checking, yes, you are present for the day. If you check, if, Obviously not much of a need to check absent, because if you didn't check present, we, we are assuming that you are absent. If you check in after 8.30, you will be considered late. All right, again, let's say it again. If you are not checked in by 8.30 each morning, you are considered late. Just like if you were in school, if you arrive after 8.30, you are considered late. Um, Last year, with the, the transition coming mid-year, 
I felt like it was a bit sloppy for us. Kids were able to log in almost whenever they felt like it. This year, with the start of the year, we need to be in our routines early on and following that regular schedule. Um, important to know, and, and my, my own family, my own son is guilty of this, the days of playing Fortnite till four o'clock in the morning and the days of being in house party or whatever, whatever kids are doing late night and then sleeping the day away are over. The school day is going to begin every day at 8.30. It's important that we have these routines. It's important that we start the year with these normal routines. It's important that our kids are getting out of bed and that they are getting dressed and they are taking their attendance every day so that the school year can begin with good routines. This year, for the upcoming school year, we're going to be using three different online platforms, right? These platforms are familiar to most of you. If you're an incoming sixth grader, there's some new ones, but almost all of you right off the bat should be familiar with Google Classroom. Google Classroom is the primary means of, of instruction for all of our students. Every IS34 student has a Google Classroom login that was provided by the school. I'm proud to tell you that out of almost 1,200 students, we have less than 20 students that have yet to log in to the, to the IS34 Google Classroom page. That's pretty impressive, and I'm proud of our kids for following through and, do, and doing what needs to be done there. As I said, Google Classroom is the primary instructional resource for our school. All student assignments, all classwork, all assessments will be posted in Google Classroom by your child's teacher daily. All right, again, all classwork, all assessments, all student assignments will be posted daily inside of your child's class specific Google Classroom pages. English, math, social studies, science, STEM, dance, health, Whatever, they, whatever the class may be, there will be a unique Google Classroom for each of those classes and the assignments for the day will be posted in there. Um, all students will submit their daily classwork via Google Classroom. Again, for the most part, whether you are in person or remote, that work will be submitted through Google Classroom. We're trying our best this year not to collect a lot of things. So the electronic submission of work through Google Classroom will be key. Uh, almost all tests, almost all tests and assessments for this school year will be taken via Google Classroom. If you are an in-person student, that time in school to me is super valuable. So I don't want to use that little bit of time we have to see you in person to give you an exam or to give you an assessment. So for the most part, almost all assessments will take place inside of Google Classroom. The link to live instruction for Google Meets, for Zoom classes, et cetera, will also be posted in Google Classroom every day. So if your teacher is going live and teachers will go live every day, when your teacher is going live, that link to the live assignment, to the live classroom instruction will be posted in Google Classroom and the student will just have to click the link to join the session. In-person students will also use Google Classroom daily. Our goal is for there to be as much consistency as possible between what's happening in school and what's happening in Google Classroom. Right. We've worked very, very hard with our staff to ensure that this is the case. So there should be a, a very much a mirroring of what's happening in school and what's happening in Google Classroom. In Google Classroom, each student will join their schedule specific Google Classroom pages. And all students must join our Everything Eagles page. And as we said before, our grade specific attendance pages. So they should have a whole schedule of their Google Classroom pages, as well as the Everything Eagles page, which is 
kind of an extension of our website. We're posting all relevant information, anything that they need to know, any tips, any pointers, any information that comes our way. I try to share that in the Everything Eagles page. And then the attendance page will be specifically for attendance each day. Let me just check the waiting room. Give me one second. We have some people still coming in. Very good. All right. Um, as I mentioned before, attendance will be taken every day using those pages. Failing to log on by 8.30 will cause your child to be either late or absent. In addition to Google Classroom, we'll also continue to use Pupil Path. Pupil Path has been around for a long time at IS34. It may be new to some of our sixth graders if they didn't have it in their elementary schools. Um, Pupil Path is simply our online gradebook. Grades are posted in real time in Pupil Path and they are visible to students and parents. Um, it's also our primary means of written communication from school to home. Um, everyone, both students and parents, should have a Google Class, I am sorry, a Pupil Path page, a Pupil Path account. Sometimes families like to just use one. They either have a student or they have a parent. To me, that's a terrible idea because there are certain times that we only want to communicate with the parent. And there are certain things that parents don't need to see regarding some, some school assignments or whatever they may be that are being sent home just to students. So please, please, please set up a Google, a pupil path account for both the student and the parent. It will be a key to your success. Perfect. All right, the last online platform I wanna speak about is new to us this year. Um, it's called Operoo. It was formerly known as Care Monkey. So if you were a seventh grader or an eighth grader, you used Care Monkey last year. It, this year, all of our families, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade will use Operoo. It's just the, the change of name here for us. Operoo will be used to collect and distribute important information to parents. Your blue cards, there'll be no more filling out those blue cards anymore. Everybody has to fill out three or four blue cards a night. Everything in there will be entered electronically through Operoo. Any allergy information, any critical information like that that I need to know about can be shared with us through Operoo. Um, parent sign-offs, parent acknowledgements will also be done through Operoo. The system really has unlimited options. So as the year goes on, we're going to explore a lot more of those options. And it's important that you have an active account so that you do not miss anything important that needs to come home. All right. I'm just gonna admit the waiting room again. Give me one second. And I'm back. For the upcoming 2021 school year, we have updated our, and revised our school-wide grading policy. The new grading policy is designed for students to excel in both in-person instruction and remote instruction. It holds students accountable for their time and their effort in both in-person and remote instruction. Additionally, we have eliminated homework. I'll say again, for this year, we have eliminated homework. At any one time, over two thirds of our school is already home. Right? Because of that, the work is already happening at home. I do not feel that we need to send you any additional work beyond the scope of the school day. So in the past, homework accounted for almost 20% of a student's overall grade. That has now been eliminated. We are now going to judge or assess students uh, a little bit differently this year as far as, our, as far as our grading policy. So if you take a look at the screen, you see that we have a uniform grading policy for our core subject areas, math, English, social studies, and science. 60% of the overall grade will be test quizzes, projects, and performance tasks. That part has not changed. It's been 60% for years. It remains 60%. What has changed are the next two bullets. 20%, 20% of your child's grade 
will be based on their participation and their level of engagement during synchronized live teaching. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but 20% of your child's grade will be their engagement and participation in synchronized live teaching. For in-person students, everything that happens in school is synchronized instruction, right? That's live teaching. Everything that happens in school is synchronized instruction and live teaching. For students that are home, for remote students, synchronized instruction are your Google Meets, your Zoom conferences, your times where, teacher, where the teacher pulls a small group to work with a group of kids. That is your synchronized instruction on the remote side. The last 20% is, is of your child's grade will be the asynchronous instruction. This will be the independent work, all right? This is the instructional piece. This will be the same for all students, whether they are in person or at home. This is your classwork, your notebook. What work product are you producing? This is the asynchronous independent piece of your grade. How are you uh, doing when you get an assignment and you're tasked to work on your own independently to finalize that assignment? This is the extra 20% of your grade. In the past, this was kind of like your classwork grade in school. This will now be your classwork grade in school and at home during the remote learning. Hold on, I'm gonna re I'm gonna enter the waiting room. Very good. And change the slide. All right. You're going to hear two words this year an awful lot. The two words are asynchronous and synchronous instruction. All right, just to just to talk a little bit more about it and so you can see it on the screen. Asynchronous are the assignments that are posted in Google Classroom. This is where the students work independently to complete these assignments. Teachers can post videos, they can post assessments, they can post assignments, and what they're being assessed on here in the asynchronous piece is their work product. How did they do to what did they do to accomplish it? How was their level of work? Is it complete? Is it well done? Is it incomplete or is it not done at all? Synchronous instruction for both remote and in-person is the live teaching element. Again, your Google Meets, your Zoom, your whole and small group instru instruction. And here students will be judged on their level of engagement and their active participation in those uh, calls. If you take a look below that, for asynchronous work product, students can earn two points a day for a total of 10 points in a standardized five-day week. Two points are earned if a student fully completes the assignments. All right, if the student fully completes that day's assignment, they earn two points. If they partially complete the assignment, they, own, they earn one point, and if they do not complete the assignment or do not attempt the assignment, they earn zero points. Those rules are in place whether you are in person or whether you are remote. That will account for 20% of your overall grade. All synchronized classwork is due by the end of the day. Now, the end of the day to me means 2 p.m. Now I understand that if you are working independently, and sometimes there are the sharing of devices that have to happen inside the home, if you need to work past the end of the day at home to complete those assignments, of course we're going to give you that time to get it done, all right? But we, we think we have developed a system where our kids will be able to complete it within the course of the school day from 8.30 to 2 p.m. But again, if you need additional time for the asynchronous piece, we will provide that time for you and we will give you to 1159 on that same school day to submit that work product. I know that sometimes things get in the way and that, that's, that it happens and that you need additional time. Sometimes it's computer fail. So we're, we are sympathetic to that and we are understanding of that and having three kids, I know stuff like that happens. So 
we try to get the work product done within the course of the day by 2 p.m. If you need the extension, it will be available to you until 11.59 of that day. Now on the synchronous side, we don't have as much wiggle room, all right? On the synchronous instruction piece, students can earn two points a day uh, for a total of 10 points for a standard school week. And each day it, they're going to be ga gauged on how, in, how much did they participate and how engaged were they during the scheduled live Google Meets or and or how engaged were they during live instruction on an in-person school day. So kids can earn two points for logging into a Google Classroom session and participating in that session, not just logging in and putting up the black screen. That's not gonna get you two points. Two points is earned by showing your face if possible and answering questions when called upon. If you are called upon, if the teacher says, John Boyle, what's the answer to number seven? And they get no response, it's clear that you are not engaged or participating in that lesson and you cannot earn those two points on that day. So two points are earned when you are logged in and participating in the remote Google class, uh, Google Meets or the same is true inside a regular classroom. If a teacher calls on me and says, what's two plus two? And I stare at them because I wasn't paying attention because I was turned around, then I'm not fully engaged in that lesson and I can't earn two points on the day. One point is earned if you're participating, but you might be partially off task. So you're logged in, but you may not have the right answer because you weren't fully engaged. Well, the same is true in a classroom setting. If you're called upon and you weren't paying attention, when we're noticing that you were not fully engaged, you're partially on task, and that's where you get your one point. Zero points are awarded for students that do not log into their Google Meets and students that are off task during live instruction. All right, so for synchronous engagement and participation, it goes beyond logging in on the computer and it goes beyond just being having your butt in a seat inside the classroom. It's about engagement and participation. And that's where you will earn that those 20%, that 20% of your overall grade. Uh, we believe that this system really holds kids accountable for their work product and for their level of engagement. And by we think by setting these clear expectations early on before the first day of school, that children will understand the path that they need to take and that they will be set up for success. I'm just gonna admit some people from the waiting room and we have about 370 people on this call, so that's nice. All right, um, lastly, I'd like to just talk a little bit about some logistical aspects of the school day. The first one is busing. Now, busing is interesting, right? Because all summer long we heard there wasn't going to be busing. There's going to be no busing. All of a sudden, allegedly they'll be busing on the first day of school. So, four students that are in that's four students that are attending school on Monday, September 21st, busing should be in place. That information was just given to us within the last couple of days, and my parent coordinator is working very, very hard to get all of that information uploaded and we will be able to share bus routes and time slots with families very soon. So expect that information from us uh, probably towards the Thursday and Friday part of this week. Just a couple of things about busing. Um, first of all, busing is not run by the school. All right, just to be clear, we do not run busing for New York City. Busing is run by the Office of Pupil Transportation and it's not controlled at the school level. So if the bus is late or if it doesn't show up or it comes to the wrong stop or it drops your son or daughter off an hour late, it's not our fault. We didn't do it. I know parents always react and want to call the school and say, what happened to my child's bus? most of the time you are the one that are, that are telling us that information right if you let us know what the issue is we, i promise you my people will do the best they can to resolve it but i guarantee you they did not create the problem 
So please give us your patience and your consideration if there are busing issues, and I'm sure there will be for the first couple of days of school. As there are busing issues, let, let us know about them and we'll do our best to resolve them. Quite often, when it comes to the Office of Pupil Transportation, parents get better results than the school does. So when a parent calls to say, my bus was an hour late this morning, or the bus came to the wrong stop, quite often, the Office of Pupil Transportation will act because the parent called and you have the leverage. When we call, we're one of many. When you call, you're unique, and, and a lot of times results get done a lot faster that way. Again, be nice about it, and I promise you the results will always come through. If there's a student-to-student -student issue on a bus, or if there's a student-to-adult issue on a bus, that's something we can handle and we'll address right away. So if, that, if something like that happens with an issue between two kids, or if we didn't like something that happened with the bus driver, let us know about it, and we will work with our partners at Pioneer and Atlantic Charter to get those issues resolved. Um, for the first couple of days of school, I would definitely expect delays. I would expect unforeseen conditions and a snafu or two along the way. But just like anything else over time, I'm sure busing will work itself out as well. And I really, I can't say enough good things about our partners at Pioneer Bus. They do a great job. They are super responsive to us. They always look out for our school and I'm sure they'll do a great job with busing. Um, tomorrow are the first three days of the school year remote, remotely, right? So the school year begins tomorrow in a fully remote setting for all staff and students. Now these are not regular instructional days. This is not Monday, right? These are not, this is not what's gonna happen next week. These first three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday will be introductory days. My teachers will only be on uh, live with their students for about 20 minutes per class. Right? These are not teaching days. These are introduction days. What the teachers will do is do some icebreakers. They'll introduce themselves to the class. They'll talk about what their expectations are for the school year. They'll share their class contact information, their class contract. They will set up the different Google um, meets or Zooms that will take place. What we've done is we really tried to calendar all of our Google meets and Zoom sessions for live synchronous instruction so that kids don't have to choose between an English lesson and a math lesson. Those, those sessions are timed out and we have a system I think that makes sense there. Um, by now, if you haven't gotten it, it should be coming any second, our teachers are scheduling the Google Meets for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I asked them to schedule all three days in advance so that parents and students had an opportunity to check it and to log in and to know when they needed to be logged onto Google Classroom tomorrow for those introductory lessons. Um, like I said, the teachers will introduce themselves, do some icebreaker activities, review all relevant information and set up some protocols. On Monday, school begins in the fully blended model, right? So Monday, 921 is the first real day of school where instruction will begin on all levels. Cohort A, cohort A students will be present in school that day on Monday and cohorts B, C and D will all be working remotely. As I mentioned earlier, there will be continuity of instruction between what's happening in person and what's happening inside the Google Classroom remotely. Your teachers will speak a little bit more about that in their information sessions on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but there will be continuity of instruction. On Monday and every day after, until we're otherwise directed, everyone that enters the building, be it a student, a staff member, or a visitor, must have a mask all right we know that that is the policy that is not a surprise to anyone anyone entering the building must have a mask on and that mask will remain on through the extent of your visit or the extent of the school day except when you are eating lunch 
the school day, as we've mentioned over and over again, begins promptly at 8.30 and ends at 2 p.m. And we have designated entrance doors for each grade of students to come into the building. Upon entering the building, students will have their temperature checked randomly. Uh, because I can't let anyone in until 8.30 at the moment, I'm going to ask you to be a bit strategic in when you drop your children off at school. It's going to be a big hurdle for us to juggle the amount of kids that are outside before I can bring them into the building to ensure distancing and ensure spacing. And I know it's tricky coming off the summer where I'm sure a lot of our kids were not keeping their spacing. Um, they're going to need to do that while on school property. So if you can, please be strategic in the time that you drop your child off to IS-34 because I do not think I'll be able to open my doors prior to 8.30. I have a bit of a plan on how I can start to bring some kids in earlier. I'm not finalized in that plan yet, so I won't speak to the details of it. But if I can pull off what I'm hoping to pull off, we'll start to be able to bring kids in maybe around 815 if possible uh, and get them into some sort of holding area by pod. But I'm not there yet, so I don't want to, to overshare my hand there. Uh, dismissal will be every day at 2 p.m. Bus students will go directly to their bus. Buses will pull away. We dismiss on a normal school day over 1,100 kids in about three minutes. Now we're going to have less than 400 kids in school at any one time. We expect this missile to be quick, to be efficient, and to be safe. We will, we will stagger it by floor to allow for some spacing uh, and for kids to get safely out of the building. Bus kids will go directly to their buses. Walkers and students that are being picked, students that are being picked up by their parents need to go directly to their cars or walk directly home. There is no hanging out on the school property. The, the perimeter around the school needs to be vacated and empty immediately after dismissal. We do have an after school program with UAU. UAU will, will be reaching out to families that signed up for aftercare shortly um, and to give you some details of their situation. Um, I don't want to give too much information on that. UAU is a separate entity and they will do their best to communicate that information to you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, students will eat their lunch daily inside of their classrooms. Um, students can bring their own lunch from home or they can eat the school provided grab and go lunch. Uh, it's important to know that if your child forgets their lunch at home, you cannot come to school to drop it off. Say again, if your child forgets their lunch at school, you cannot come to school to drop it off. Those kids will get a regular grab and go lunch and will be able to eat lunch. We'll never, we'll, we'll always provide the food for them, but that they will get the grab and go lunch that day. I think we, you know, need to all realize that the importance of double checking our stuff in, in the morning to make sure that you have your lunch with you if you are a brown bag kid. Um, if you are an in-school lunch person, um, grab and go lunch will be provided daily. We have a good system in place, we believe, for eating inside the classroom. It is certainly not ideal. It is not something that I am excited about in any way. If it was up to me, I'd like to have them in the cafeteria. And I think we could do that safely and have all spacing requirements in place, but it is not an option for us. We are not allowed to do it. So lunch in the classroom is the reality. So now we must accept it and we must just do the best we can to ensure the success of it. Um, lunch is a working lunch. And again, this is not something that I'm super thrilled about because our kids need a little bit of time to burn off some extra energy, especially when they're sitting still all day. This is not a recess period that they're used to. However, it will be, there will be some downtime. There will be a teacher in the room. That teacher uh, will have the flexibility to give the, the kids a chance to take a little bit of a break. 
and to catch their breath and stand up and stretch their legs. It's my belief that as time goes on and we get better at this situation, and I know we will get better at it, that I will have some opportunity to use our outside field to provide uh, certain groups of students each day with an opportunity to have more of a regular lunch experience. Um, but that is something for definitely later in September, if not earlier October, before I get to that. Just the, the flow of the day for students and scheduling. Um, remote students will begin their day every day by logging on to Google Classroom at 8.30 every day. That'll be their flow. They'll get up in the morning, they'll log on to Google Classroom, they'll get their attendance taken, and then they will begin their asynchronous instruction. They'll begin their independent work that was posted inside of Google Classroom, and then throughout the day, they will have scheduled synchronous live teaching sessions with their classroom teacher. And these sessions will be calendared in advance so that students know when they need to log in, log in and participate in those synchronous sessions. So two thirds of our building, cohort B, C, D on Monday are gonna start their day by waking up, logging in at 8.30 and taking attendance and then beginning their synchronous instruction, waiting for their, a, uh, beginning their asynchronous instruction and then waiting for their synchronous live teaching sessions via Google Classroom and Zoom to begin. For our in-person students, the day also still begins at 8.30. Students will come into school. Uh, they will report to their assigned scheduled classroom at 8.30. And then they're going to remain in that room for the entire day. So each cohort of kids in each grade and each homeroom are going to report to one classroom and remain in that classroom for the entire day. Again here, just like lunch, I think that as time goes on and we become better at, and better and more acclimated to this environment, there will be some st strategic changing of classes uh, but we are not there yet, and it'll probably take me a week or two or three to feel comfortable about making those moves and to ensure that we have the systems and structures in place to do it safely and for kids to remain within their pods. What we'll try to do today, if not today, by tomorrow, is release the room assignments for our in-person students. So if you are in 601 and your room assignment is 327, we'll post that in Pupil Path, we'll post that in Everything Eagles, and we'll post that on our website and our social media pages so that everyone knows what room they're going to report to on the first day. Um, the first day for our sixth graders will be the trickiest because they do not know their way around the building. So we have some plans in place to get them into some holding areas so that we can walk them to their first couple of classes. We think it's important that we are taking care of anyone who's new to the building. So our sixth graders and any new seventh or eighth graders that we may have, we wanna make sure that they are acclimated to the building and have a chance to find their way before we just say, open the doors and go to class. So that's something that is, that is on our radar and something that we're working towards to ensure their success. Um, Art and technology classes and gym classes. So these are your STEM classes, your band classes, your dance, your drama, your chorus, et cetera, all of those different classes. This is a bit tricky. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wanna be, like I said, fully transparent about this. This is a bit tricky. There are a lot of different rules in place when it comes to gym classes or it comes to a band class or a chorus class where normal six feet of distancing is required in a regular setting, when it gets to band and to music and to chorus, they are requiring, requiring me to provide 12 feet of distance, right? So it obviously shrinks my ability right off the bat with 12 feet of mandated social distancing in place. Regardless, we have what we think is a good plan but for the first couple of weeks, while we become acclimated to this transition, 
what we are going to do is kids are going to remain in their rooms, just like we said before, classes and cohorts and pods will remain in their room. And the art and technology teacher will report to the pod. So for the first few weeks of school, you may not have your normal art and technology class or your normal art and technology teacher. They will just be reporting to classrooms and delivering in-person instruction to whatever group of kids is in front of them at the time. Remotely, your regular program will exist. So remotely, your art teacher, your band teacher, your chorus teacher, your STEM teacher, your dance teacher, your drama teacher will be communicating with you remotely. Your assignments will be posted remotely and you will have total continuity of instruction on the remote side for art and tech. In person, for the first couple of weeks, it will be random. You'll have a band class one day, an, an art class another day, uh, a dance class another day. Um, that is just until I get comfortable and our kids get comfortable with the flow. And we're anticipating about two to three weeks in that we should be pretty comfortable in that setting. And then we will begin to transition and change classes by pod and cohort to those art and technology classes. And for those classes, we're going to be utilizing our fields. We're gonna be utilizing a portion of our dead end street in front of the building on Academy Avenue. We're gonna be utilizing our large spaces, our auditorium, our cafeteria, and our gyms so that 12 feet of spacing is in place and that these kids can have the art and tech classes that they chose in the setting that they're used to. We are committed to trying to keep this as normal as possible. All right, I hate the word new normal, I won't say it. We are committed to keeping our day as normal as possible. I don't wanna to return to the new normal, I wanna get back to normal, which is what we've always been used to and what we are successful in. So your patience, your child's patience and the teacher's patience is all required to make this art and technology piece work. We're gonna roll it out, like we said, kind of in like phases. The first couple of weeks will be randomized in person but consistent at home. And then in phase two, it will be consistent in person and consistent at home, utilizing those large spaces. So just bear with me as we navigate this. Like I said, it's a bit tricky, but we are committed to, by the second week of October, being pretty close to normal with our art and tech classes. Um, think we are coming pretty much to the end of the topics that we wanted to speak to you about. Um, but the last thing I want to talk to you about is the idea of changing our mindset around our approach to remote learning, right? Last year, it was cast upon us in mid-March. There was very little time for us to plan to make it successful. And I think we as a school, as a staff, as a school community with parents and students did a great job. But there were aspects of it that I think we can do better. And through a lot of planning, a lot of collaboration, a lot of feedback from staff, parents, students, we have developed what we think to be a great approach to this. We cannot start our year without having good routines. Um, we have to play the hand that we're dealt. This is not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. So we have to do what we always do here at IS34 is we have to raise the level of expectation. We need to raise the bar on what remote learning is going to look like. Uh, let's have high expectations for our students. Let's have high expectations for our staff. And let's also set high expectations for ourselves. Let's set the tone early, all right? Let's establish good routines, both in school and at home, all right? Like I asked before, don't let them play Fortnite till four in the morning, all right? Don't let them stay up and house party, you know? Get them back into a bedtime routine, all right? Get them back into those routines that make them successful on a regular school day 
It's what we need to be successful in this remote and blended setting. Uh, get them dressed in the morning. Get them out of bed, get them dressed, get them downstairs, get them in front of their computer, get them logged on by 8.30 and get their attendance taken. Your work will already be posted in Google Classroom. So get to work independently, right? You know what's expected of you. If you know what's expected of you and you have clear expectations and good routines, you will be successful. Do not let good enough be enough, all right? Do not let good enough be enough. We wanna dominate this remote learning situation. We want to do the best we can. Our kids have regressed enough. I'm over that. It's time to push forward at this point. We need to move forward. No more negatives. This is all about what can we do to make this situation as normal as possible and we remain committed to both the in-person and the blended situation, the remote situation, being as normal as possible every single day. Right? We work too hard, you've worked too hard, your kids need this, they crave structure, they crave rules, they crave systems, let's give them those systems so that they are ready to roll on day one we have worked so hard all summer. We are ready for our kids to return to school. We need it to happen, right? We have a plan in place that we think allows both the in-person and the remote kids to thrive. I certainly hope that we have a chance to do it, all right? You know, the next few days are going to be filled with a lot of questions. I know you read a lot of different things in the newspapers. I am confident, my fingers are crossed, that we will be here on in a live setting and that we will be successful cohort a on monday cohort b on tuesday cohort a again on wednesday cohort b on thursday cohort c on friday take a look at the website it gets confusing use the website use that chart so you know when your kids are coming to school but we have a system that is ready to be successful thank you for listening thank you for your cooperation we are excited to have you all back. We, our kids are ready to soar. They are ready to have just another great day at IS34. Now it's time. Let's get back to work. Thank you all for listening today. I know you have a bunch of questions. We'll keep this open for a few minutes so that you can put your questions into the chat. We will download those questions and we will answer them in writing. Uh, by midday tomorrow, we'll get that information out to you. Whatever I can get done today, I will get done, but it may take me some time, depending on how many questions are in the chat. I have not even looked yet. I imagine there are a bunch. This whole video has been archived, it's been recorded, and it will be posted on our website, and it will be posted on our social media pages for everybody to see. Let's get our kids back to school. Keep your fingers crossed, positive thoughts, positive vibes, good routines. And let's get this done. Thanks for listening, everybody.